first pick again. I think this is the first time we've seen that in the whole main event, that one team gets first pick twice in a row. Because every single time, yes. the yeah. team with the seeding advantage has, has picked first has pick. taken first pick, you're yes. right. Okay. So, Did they have it last game? Yeah, CDC had first pick last game, but it's not swapped. The other team gets oh, okay. to choose. Yeah. So that means they... either EG did not choose first pick or the other way around. Yeah, CDC were on die last time, had first pick. Yeah, remember, remember it was CDC that all the way through TI5 played Dire in all yeah. but I think four or five of their matches. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be surprising if there was going to be one team. But again, then, then why is EG not first pick? I mean, maybe they think that they can ban the, like, leave Doom and other heroes in the pool and just snag a really strong one-two punch after the first pick Tusk or something like that. So you think they CDC? chose second pick? That, I think that's more likely. EG? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Wow, the Bane ban. Yeah. That's eight, so that's again. slightly different. Three out of the four are the same. They, they, yeah. they ban Fear. Yep, you guys called yep. it two Fear heroes. EG will get Spirit Breaker now, I think. Even though it's not that good against Tusk, it's still a solid idea for them to go for. I agree with that. Um, I mean, now we're, we're talking about it like Fear has three heroes, which is not the case. It's just the yeah. three heroes we've seen the most. All right, they're going to ignore it. Shadow Fiend goes through because of this. So we get SF and Doom on Radiant. This is pretty strong. I mean, ar arguably RTZ and Sumail, the two best SF players that we've seen. They're so. very, very good. <laughs> yeah. Shadow Fiend is a hero that there are so many players that are incredibly talented on right. that I think it's difficult at this point in time to say who's the best. So do you go with AA right now for the global synergy with the Ice Blast, or do you go with something like Spirit Breaker to maybe put a little bit more pressure on the Shadow Fiend? Mm -hmm. I when, think... I, when I AA last time. Yeah. yeah. I think SB Tusk is a little bit too much pigeonholing or something, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, I mean, now C they don't have CDC to worry. CDC has run that combo before. They have, but yeah. They're oh, the okay. Yep. So the yes. early leader. That is a very good choice, I think. The alternative for them would have been to wait and try for TA. For example, against the Shadow Fiend, also a decent matchup. But TA it doesn't beat Shadow Fiend like she used to anymore. Yeah, but EG might just run... Like, if CDEC don't ban TA Ten now, they might actually two. run it in the second phase, put SF in the safe lane, and she can still get destroyed, because yeah. I think that's actually the best matchup versus the Lena. Radiance ban. That is true. Yeah. Still, a Radiant Shadow Fiend, you might lose to Lena marginally, but you will generally yeah. be on par after 10 minutes with stacks. Yeah, you can lose the lane and still catch up very efficiently. You just need to not die, which is difficult if CDC tr do go for that Spirit Breaker, for example. Now I think it's a lot stronger than it was before. It's also the combo we've seen out of uh, Virtus Pro. Breaker plus Lena, very strong. A lot of good team fight heroes left in the pool too, Winter Wyvern and Darkseer in particular. But as you mentioned, the Spirit Breaker deserves some consideration. I don't think CDC will give them the Wyvern this Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I would be a little bit surprised if this next man isn't Wyvern. They already targeted PPD with a Dazzle because of his synergy with SF. And of course, it's a better synergy than the Wyvern has. If they do give Wyvern away, they need to make sure they have enough spell burst. Of course, Lena is great, seconds. but... We've seen heroes get pretty tanky pretty fast, especially hurry, Shadow hurry. Yeah, I think it's pretty scary if evil geniuses can Where's manage to pick time? up the Spirit Breaker. You said they went through with some of the fear bands, but not all of them yet. Right. That's true. They could ban the SP as well. But otherwise, they might. We, we might see a lot of rotation to the mid lane, similar to how Bane and Winter Wyvern kind of ruined the DK. There we go. That's Wyvern. So they can get it now if they want to EG. Yeah, I, I still would rather give up. I, I still would rather give up Spirit Breaker than the Wyvern. I feel like Wyvern yeah, just I agree. destroys so much of what CDC want to do. I mean, alternatively, they can Ten take the AA so CDC don't get it. I still think there's. I mean, Five then I think they grab the Breaker though. Mm -hmm. That's like serving it on a platter almost. He's a very good hero against AA. Is Visage a fit here for CDC? They've run that hero very, very well, and, and the vision advantage, again, is just something I go back to over and over for them. They could do that. They could do Night Stalker that we talked to about as well. Yeah. He is actually a decent hero when he gets doomed, because he can still run away. Oh, Bounty! That's a great quality to have. Bounty is in Bounty, Bounty would be a fit here. Yep, I agree. I think the difference, or the key difference we're getting at here is that we feel like CDC has a lot of options yes. compared to last game. So for me, it's they just have a better opener in the draft. I'm saying that against the team that has SF Doom. 
Uh, it just seems more like a CDC game. No, that, that's actually it's one of the ways that you can kind of tell when when you're predicting when you're predicting the last pick of a team, even though you know that the matchup is bad, yeah. like the Dragonite in the last game. That's that's a failed draft. Dip and the breaker. So I'm going to give CDC the chance. <laughs> Has Fear played any other hero than those three in this tournament? I think all the games I've seen him on, uh, Bane or. Yeah, dying. he's he's not uh, the only other the only the other hero besides those three that he has multiple games on this Patrick Wraith King and Naga and they've gone away from the Naga. Five seconds. Hurry, hurry. I wonder if we'll see the PPD special with the Abaddon this game. I was considering that with the defensive supports being banned out actually, it is a possibility. Eho made it work very well. It was well, against they, a different kind yeah. of draft, though. They made it work in one game where it basically countered everything. And there's the clockwork. And again, you know, the, the first phase gyro clockwork from EG in the TI5 Grand Finals was so huge. Well, taking gyro away from the aggressive and then division advantage with the clockwork that they just abused. This is a lot of information, though. It's three cores picked by EG. It's already. true. It's very rare for them. So CDC can actually start targeting... Uh, they can take the support mm. they would least. How about we see give Sphere play position for Doom though, on occasion? I, I mean, it's something that other teams have run, so I, I, yeah. I mean, it's not guaranteed. He's only done it once in this patch. It's yeah. so greedy though. Against a team like CDC, I think it's one of the scariest teams to run a greedy jungler against. Well, you could roam. But you could roam on the Lino with it. I think the Ooh. Tranquil Boots Orb of Venom. Yes. Wow. Perch is smiling. He's China Doom. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know it too. Apparently, level two, you get a wolf. Oh. Over venom, and I'm, then the, I'm the one who told Bliss about it. Okay, do, <laughs> I, you did? Do, I, do I get to do I get to brag a little bit about the visage? Five seconds. A little bit. Okay, a little, a little. Okay, you get a pat on the shoulder. Nice. Actually, it's not worth it. You're not on camera. Okay, I'll do it. Wow. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I need a little love. Now, the, the visage is actually eight and two overall in this tournament, and and eight and two. Yeah, eight That's and two. Really Will's been really good. Uh, Q's been really good. Do you think CDC could actually consider going for a draw? They have they've done it in, in the past. past. Yeah, yeah, they've done it in the past. <laughs> I actually think it makes. I mean, look, you've got you've got Shadow Fiend and you've got two melees. I, I mean, Clockwork against Drow is always really scary. But... I mean, how long ago are we talking about? I haven't seen it in the last month. No, no, it was quite some while back. I just seem to recall it being a CDC classic in the Chinese qualifiers for TI. Yes, they were playing it quite a bit, so yes. they definitely are capable. Uh, that was back when they, they you have to you have to remember that back then they were playing a very different it's style of Dota. Sense. Like they yeah. changed their style dramatically from yeah. the qualifiers coming into TI. I still Five think it's a bit here. It, 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 ordinarily, like playing Drow against a Clockwork is just a nightmare. But remember that CDC tend to five man a little more, so getting getting caught out with the hook solo with the draw is a little bit less of a concern for them. This bench pick for me seems to serve two purposes. First of all, it needs to be... If you look at how Fear plays and what um, what they try to to do with, with his picks, either they're tanky frontliners that engage like Undying or Spirit Breaker, or we have the Bane, which is all about the timing with Nightmares and being also kind of innately tanky and able to fight. I think Venge is a pretty good fit for him, and it also helps set up for the potential drow that they might be expecting to come in uh, from CDC. This might scare them off from that idea if they did have it. Yeah, they just did. That's, that's a lot of positioning tools now. Yeah. That said, though, we did see the game with VP versus Alliance, where Alliance on multiple occasions actually did go in and kill the Drow, and then the trade-off was just too bad because they had right. to commit so far into the fight, like you have to go in the back lines. But the pain, the main difference in that game was that VP had the Shadow Fiend too. Exactly. And this time, there's no such trade-off. To my recollection, though, PPD plays the Venge, not Fear. But but we just haven't seen far. Fear play it. Yeah, and there's the bounty. All right, Wait, two for two, baby. <laughs> Okay, so if it... This is, again, it's funny to, because we're all talking about the two previous tournaments in ESL New York and MLG, we're all talking about how CDC got figured out. And this is vintage CDC. This is exactly what they were doing at TI, but they play it so well. Maybe what they were talking about with their experiments, that they've been trying new stuff, maybe they're picking the heroes in a different order. So that's the experiment that now Bounty Hunter is fourth pick wow. instead of second. Don't, don't get too crazy, Sam. Don't next get level, too crazy. Next level stuff, this is. But they actually expect the Doom to be played by Fear instead of position one. So this is why they picked the Bounty Hunter to do it. Are you with. sure that's why? I'm, I mean, I think it also works really well are with we, Alina. They can press her Shadow Beam, but I think. I think it's more about that than the Jungle Doom. Are, are we sure Fear has Five a hero? Hurry, I'm hurry. Pretty sure do you really? Doom. You ban the PL here? 
I added that. Yeah, I guess you do. I guess you do. You definitely you have a lot of single target. target. Yeah. I think Bielsa was would have been a really good pick. Out of here is just a terrible overall. So they ban Ember. You're right. Team. They do expect it to be a jungle doom then. Which is interesting because they already have a really good counter in the Bounty Hunter, so if EG do want to run for a safe lane Ember, they could just exploit I mean, the fact that Doom's uh, Again, I think the threat of the aggressive jungle Doom is is there, especially with Alina in the game. Alina is really vulnerable to that. Okay, can, can you just flip the script at the very end here and go TA and go 4 Clockwork? I don't think so. Ten seconds you could do that and go 4 Doom. Still. 4 Doom, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they could. They could try that. Five seconds and uh, TA is actually really good. Apart, yes, Night track Stalker. is kind of the Night Stalkers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Safe Lincoln. Boy, and I, that to me is... that's a good hero for fear oh. too. Actually, NS is great for him. And they're gonna have the vision edge. EG will. Uh, so what will aggressive play now? It's not the the normal three. How much bounty do you guys play? How much how much harder is it to get that full team track off? I haven't gotten to play a lot of bounties since the vision change. They did it one... To, well, yeah, so the one time CDC did do that was at TI5, and since it got nerfed, I don't think we've seen them play a three bounty. They always play a four, I think. Yeah, usually four. Um, but the idea of playing him off lane and throwing curveball actually isn't half bad here. What fighter do you like for aggressive? Slaughter, maybe? Slaughter's Slaughter, Slaughter is Slaughter's good. I, I, Drow's still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm much more about Slardar than just Drow. Kill, kill their towers. Well, it's, it's not Toby casting, so... <laughs> and Drow would be great. Oh, Drow is always good then. Juggernaut is also a possibility. Oh, yeah. I like the idea of Jugger. Whoa! Oh my god! CDC versus Evil Geniuses. It's all yours, Audi. Thank you very much, Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are live here in the Mesa, getting ready for game number two. Of course, I'm LG. I'm joined here by Blitz. Blitz, I have to ask you, as someone who's never cast an international grand finals, what are your thoughts on the draft? Honestly, the draft seems to be a little bit better for, for EG. They got a lot of the comfort heroes, but... They have a hero that's... I mean, CDEC, they've got a hero that's less relevant than anybody on BTS is. is they picked up the Lifestealer. This is a hero, this is a hero that... <laughs> Alright, let's just reset. Let's talk about the game. This is EG versus C -Day. Honestly, we're just... It's not about us. It's, it's about the players and aggressive. The Lifestealer... It was One of us has become too a really YOLO pick. Like, this is a hero that... Again, we haven't seen in quite some time. Playing. They probably have played it a few times, like, you don't YOLO this. This might just be a strategy that they've kind of tailored themselves around at one point or another. Generally, when you see Lifestealer picks, you look for that vehicle, but there has been the interesting change where you can take over the Ancients. I know Loda experimented with the Radiance creep and just kind of ran around, like, slowly burning down enemy heroes, but by the time he got the Radiance, they could also just kill the creep fairly quickly. Do you... Have you gotten to see much Lifestealer lately? Any thoughts on, like, how they might look to use it? Because obviously it's not like the old style, you know, back when you were relevant and Storm Spirit was getting picked, where you infest him and then look to jump in. He doesn't really have a great vehicle. No, he doesn't this game. I guess the Tusk Snowball might be the second best thing that he's got going for him, and the Bounty Hunter Invis, you can set some interesting angles up for that, but what I really think this pick comes down to is a hero that can still get the right click off, has a lot of mobility against the Doom when he eventually will Doom him, and can do well against the Clockwork. Yeah, and there is a bit of a change up here with Sumail taking over the Doom as well. So a lot of adjustments. Of course, EG has shown quite a bit of versatility as of late in terms of the ability to switch up Sumail and Arteezy. They ran the Doom off lane last game. They're not afraid to mix up the lanes here in order to try and get the better matchup. So with that, the bounty runes are grabbed and we're into it, folks. It's EG versus C Deck game two. The boys in blue looking for the 2-0 and C Deck looking to force that deciding game number three. And good news for the C-Deck fans, Shiki will be on a very comfortable hero. One he has single-handedly won many a game for them with on the Lina. Gets the better creep lock here off the bat. Arteezy probably not going to be too happy about that and does have to worry about that early pressure from Garter, though. In fact, he's not there and he is scouted, so Arteezy can play a little more confidently. Something really interesting here is that in the last game, I felt that objectively EG had the better draft and they had to take some heroes as a result that they weren't 100%. Uh, comfortable with like the timber saw I know 
Sumail's been playing a lot more of, but still not something that we quite know him for. Maybe after this tournament, we'll start thinking about it, but this time around, it feels like both teams got the draft that they wanted. I mean, Sumail likes to play aggressive, right? And Doom is definitely that kind of here. You get the safe late farm, you can just run at fools very early on, so... Could end up being something that really suits his play style. Even if it's not a go-to for him. So early on, we see great farm for Artesian. They did manage to D-ward up towards the, the dire jungle at the very least. I think they may have suspected the Bounty Hunter was scouted just because Arteezy was playing so confidently in the lane, but already the damage somewhat done here is he has gotten 7 CS this early versus Alina with the better creep lock. That's a great start. That's incredibly surprising for me just because A, the Lina is able to zone out pretty heavily with the Light Strike Array and you can almost never trade with the SF in the early game because you just don't have the stats to do so. Like 47 damage a hit plus the fact that you don't want to really use the raise just oh, to harass. Lane. They are going on Universe here. He's dropping quite low. He cogs himself in with Garter. A rare first blood for Universe. The bounty normally known for the pressure on the mid lane but he strikes top. It is only a clock who is still getting his experience, but a nice start here for c -Deck. I really like that the Bounty Hunter decided to start on that top lane and focus on shutting down Universe. I feel like too few teams do this to Universe. They don't often take him out of his comfort zone. And most importantly, most of the time, you're going to have the sentry lane in the mid lane. And so the Bounty Hunter's rotations aren't as effective. You notice that Arteezy, he was forced to grab his bottle by the mid tier two tower. So you've already kind of slowed down his pace a little more than he would like. And with the sentry mid, the Bounty Hunter's not going to have quite the impact that he wants, but he does have boots, he has the Janata available. And he can scout the stacks, and Garter is headed that way. Yes. Most importantly though, in case the Flying Courier comes in, you've got opportunities there as well, with your level 2. Can they make a go here on Arteezy? He might be able to come through the trees, but Arteezy playing behind the tower. You can see he doesn't scout that Bounty Hunter. In fact, a couple of heroes missing. He may notice something's up here when this stack doesn't work. No, he's just going to start. Okay, it does drag the creeps back with the raise. Tanks a early auto attack from the bounty and oh, probably should realize soon enough this is warded. Yeah, and this is going to help Shiki get a little bit more traction in this lane. Like you said in the beginning, Arteezy was getting a little bit too much, but with this stack being blocked and the bounty hunter forcing the SF back to the base, it's going to give him a little bit more free room to farm, get a little bit more ahead as you want to see Alina do against the Shadow Fiend mid. There's the TP back in, and Arteezy will rejoin lane already. So they have 13-0, but Cheeky with the Bounty Hunter's movement towards mid and the lack of vision has really started to pull ahead now. 19-7, and seven, as you would expect, having a powerful start. The Doom, meanwhile, of Sumail, having a great time bottom lane. We're not going to see any of that early Midas rush today. It's all about the upgraded boots, sometimes even the drum, the early aggression, and Sumail appears to be headed that way. Does have the Hurl Boulder now, so a little bit of initiation available for him. They're going to move in on mid. No more sentry for our tour. Uh, has to be careful here. Alina stun could really set things up, but no boots yet on Shiki. Trying to make the move. Uh, good juke back, but he knows just how dangerous the match is. Yeah, as soon as you get hit by the stun, the bounty hunter's right there. I doubt they're able to kill him, but you really want to be careful if you're Arteezy. Just play the passive farming game, and you've got really dangerous supports on the side of EG. You almost expect the Shadow Fiend to die once or twice to this, you know? It's like almost part of the game plan in a way. It's just so hard to stop it. Once you get to Treads, you're okay. Yeah. Before that point, though, things are a little bit dangerous. And that's why, even if you're missing out on a little bit of farm like the SF is, it's okay because, like you said, if you're expected to die, you're going to just play incredibly defensively and make sure that that doesn't happen. Don't feed away those crucial levels. They're going to make the move on Q, though, and oh, there's dear. no way he expects this. Oh. Night Stalker joining the party. Not even really required here, but will help secure the kill. EG, as soon as that nighttime hits, a quick jump towards top. They bring down the Visage, and uh, we saw last game just how much Q can do with farm on any support. Uh, I've seen it on his Silencer. We normally see it on the Visage, and oh, we even saw on the AA last time, but this time around, he will be slowed down a bit early, and now the pressure comes to aggressive slain. This was the big question mark. We didn't really get to discuss it too much as Universe starts to take some damage here. Aggressive's going to go in on this one and Infest, get me out of here. He will run away and pops right back out. But it's denied the kill. Still EG, three heroes top. And I do want to point out, Arteezy, this ward still has not been dewarded. And they've put up another Observer near the camp closer towards the mid-tier one. So he's not getting that big economic boost you often see for the Radiant Shadow Fiend. 
No, they've done a really good job of game planning around this fact, and I was a little bit surprised when they let the SF just go through because this is an RTZ special, plus EGR on the Radiant side. This usually kind of just spells the fact that they're almost immediately going to first pick it. And so C-Deck, they came with a game plan though. The sentry ready, the bounty hunter is going to be the one to place it. If he was any other support, maybe he gets spotted and killed, or maybe it's not as effective. But the bounty hunter, this is a hero that's meant to just time consume. You don't necessarily need levels, because all you really need is track up. Like, this hero is meant to just slow down other heroes, so that your team is okay with fighting four on five. They are poking their heads out here towards the top lane. Garter, making the ping out, but I don't know if he's actually seen Universe, who has tucked himself deep inside the tree line. As he will plant down a lane ward, it is nighttime, so it was not scouted. And then backs himself away. The vision here is just immaculate, really, for C-Deck at this stage. Gives them a lot of freedom elsewhere. But still, the two big cores on EG Blitz, they are farming quite well. Yeah, they've done a really good job so far of setting up the lanes. The Doom is naturally just going to win in CS, because you get a free CS every 60 seconds. And the Tusk, this isn't a hero that's meant to zone out by any means. As he's going to get pushed back a little bit. Yeah, has managed to crack that level 5, but with a slight bit of early pressure, once the Doom gets the phase boots and even just the level 2 Scorched Earth, let alone level 3. Life is hard versus Doom. So he hugs the tower. It's basically free farm for Sumail. That said, it is nighttime, and that's coming to an end fairly soon. And perhaps that's the point where C-Deck start to get more active on the map. Still curious to see what they do with the life dealer, and well, he's gonna TP bottom, so perhaps this will answer the question. Is a, a, a bounty in Vespa? All right, so this is the other vehicle that we were talking about, right? This is the less reliable one, but possibly the easier one to set up is they can kill Doom pretty quickly. They sneak up on Sumail. They are gonna isolate him. He gets off the pulser. Now he's gonna get the double Doomling mini shard toss. Oh, so adorable, but dead all the same. There's a lot of dead Doom buddies on the ground right now. But... Watching that bounty hunter walk in was like watching you learn how to ride a bike well, but it worked in the end. I mean, then unlike the bike, I wasn't able to do that one. <laughs> I guess my analogy falls apart there. Yeah. Did you never really learn? No, I couldn't. Did Kevin not tell you what happened? <laughs> I tried going off on a curb and I hit my genitals against the handlebar really hard because I panicked. And instead of helping me up, Purge just watched me and started laughing and trying to record it. <laughs> Get Radiant the camera on. <laughs> oh dear. But it is a very clever way to use that infest. And I like the fact this is a total switch from last game. We talked about it early. The Radiant analyst really, I think, broke it down more that Aggressive was not going around the map creating space. He was very much running for his life, as we do see. Fear trying to dive Q top lane. Does get off the Grave Chill here. It is a hasted Night Sucker. Only level 4, though. It does have to fight through that Gravekeeper's Cloak. But I like the fact they're getting Aggressive involved early, basically. No, this is what they needed in the previous game. Is Aggressive isn't the type of hero that just wants to sit in the lane, farm nonstop. You want to try to play aggressive on this side of the map, but the Doom comes out. Tanks the Doom. It's only a Bounty Hunter. Still a nice pick for EG, but... I mean, hey, at least it's not one of your big heroes. Yeah, keeping your life zero alive right now is the priority, but something that is a little bit worrying for C Deck is that they haven't been able to pressure the Shadow Fiend quite yet, but another Infest comes out. This time it's on XZ. They're gonna bait the Tusk a little bit, but if nobody decides to go on this, this might just be a waste of time. It's always the risk when you see a life zero pick. Used to be a big problem for a lot of teams was balancing how often do you want to be infested in ganking versus how often are you farming. So far, hasn't been that much time investment, but if Fear backs off now and dodges this, eh, they're not even going to waste it. They just decide to go back to farming creeps. Yeah, that was a full minute of commitment. That's about enough time. At that, any more, you're just kind of... Even if you get the kill at that point, it's going to be a level 4 Night Stalker, right? It's not even really worth the right. investment. And Sumail continues to farm it up bottom. The Shadow Fiend... Yeah, they shut down Arteezy early game, but now sits at 74 CS right there with the Lina. Dead even on net worth. But Zedek do look to amplify the pressure here. Their big source of sieging early. That's the Visage. Has the familiars out now. And here comes the push. EG, they're going to go for the pressure on the other side of the map, though, at the same time. And this is a much more balanced Zedek that, we see, that we've seen in this game, as opposed to the last one where it felt like because the laning phase went so bad, they were never able to really catch their footing and get aggressive on the map. Yeah, they were very reactionary that time. Not that they really had a choice, but that's just not the style they're used to playing. You want to be able to set your pace against a team like EG. You don't want to just play off of what they're doing. You don't want to play off their map movements. And this is the way that you're going to beat them. Just show them no respect. 
Maybe a little respect. Nah, man. No <laughs> Just start banging on the, the window of the booth. I, I really think when you're playing against a team like this, you can't just overly think to yourselves, this is the TI5 champions. You have to kind of say, if we play our style and we're able to execute, yeah. we can win this game. Oh yeah, in that sense, I definitely agree. So it is going to be drums up for aggressive. Looks like the, the old YYF build here. Let's see if he wants the Sanjin Yasha. Often do see the armlet picked up as well. But does he go for something different? Any other unconventional items that you we could expect to see on the Lifestealer, do you think? I think the YYF build is probably the most typical. Just going to go for the mobility Radiant's rather than the armlet or anything like that. Especially when you're playing against a tomb, right? Like you have an armlet on plus your tomb running. <laughs> you're going to die really quickly. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. And I imagine he is probably the Doom target here most of the time. It's probably going to be the Lina, because most of the time the way that I balance it out in my head anyways is how much damage does a hero do versus how tanky they are. Mm -hmm. Like, Alina is incredibly weak, even with the Yule Scepter. This isn't the great, the greatest item when it comes to defensive positions, because as soon as you use the Yule Scepter on yourself, you're still Alina with 900 HP, not a lot of armor, right? And you're stuck in the position that you were before. Like, this is meant to be an offensive item by all means. Oh, they bring in the familiars. This could be the setup here. One stun, two stuns on fear, but is that the hero you want to jump? Tanky and only a support. Seems no, but EG are going to look to farm these. Another round of charge. This time they're going to go. They try to use the familiars as bait. Uppercut comes in on the fear. He's still very tanky. And Life Stealer is going to engage into the fight. Tries to go. Pops out into the infest. No look to retreat. Still nobody dead just yet. A lot of spells committed. Everybody walks away. What did Sumail doom there? Was it a creep? Or? No, he doomed. Uh, he doomed the Lina. Okay. He made sure that fear wasn't opened up on with the ultimate. Gotcha. And I think that was the right decision because EG didn't really have a way to get in on that angle, so they just said, okay, we'll use the doom to disengage and force C deck back. Still emerges intact, and well, both teams reset. Does anybody actually look to fight now? We, did, we also didn't see Universe in that one. Has the hookup now? Yeah, he, I don't think he had the best Radiant's angle, and he wasn't quite there yet. Attacked. Oh, they do scout him. But they want to pressure. They want towers. They're using the familiars here. C-Deck marching in. There's a glyph ready, but they've already cleared out the trees. And EG, a, quite, quite a big swamp from game one. It's C-Deck making all the early moves. It's EG, mostly forced to give up objectives. But they are still farming quite well. Yeah, and they're doing a really good job so far of scouting out Vision, making sure that Arteez is getting free farm during this time. And this is the type of hero that Arteez really likes to play, the ones that can kind of just force out the waves immediately, just with one or two abilities and create space for himself. And you notice that he's using the Helmet Dominator to grab this Harpy Stormcrafter, who's got fantastic vision for a neutral creep. Like, look how far along it can see. And this is going to help him just farm out the jungle repeatedly. Like, look at the position that he's taken so far. Oh, he might, might just get, get caught, caught out! Oh! Ho, ho. Arteezy really playing with fire there. But this forced a lot of rotation. I mean, that was the creep, safe? though, you know? If he didn't see that snowball coming a split second earlier, he may just die there. There's a dust pop bottom. Universe is going to engage on the garter. Does find the bounty hunter. Looks like it should be a freebie. And indeed, the bounty will go down. Still looking for his level 6. Nice pick off there. It's but EG the Lina is getting opened up on in the river. Or the SF. <laughs> in the end, it's Arteezy who does get punished. So a nice trade there. C deck lose their bounty hunter. Do manage to grab the Shadow Fiend. Arteezy still on top of the net worth chart. I mean, the man knows how to farm. That is for damn sure. But it does die now. And C deck, if, if history is our guide, they may look for a push off of that. Well, maybe not yet. Yeah, despite how much farm he's been able to get and how greedy he's been, this Lina has done such a good job of keeping up and. You can tell that Shiki, his other heroes are good, but his Lina really kind of sets him apart. Like, this is the hero that you can tell he's the most comfortable on. And for Lina to be ahead in net worth against a Shadow Fiend who had some ancient stacks, had or had some jungle stacks, and was playing incredibly aggressively at top. And he's gone for the Dominator, he's gone for the more aggressive build. Mid lane, though, there's a stun on to Fear. Out comes the Slave, a couple more auto attacks, needs that one last one, and gets the kill. Shiki really starting to heat up. We have seen this before out of C deck. He gets going. It is very hard to stop. Yeah, this is going to create a lot more space for Aggressive, who oh. can kind of focus on farming a little bit more than he did Look in that previous place. game. Are they actually trying to do this? Oh, this is why you're seeing these items allow them to. They've got the Vlads, they have the Dominator, the Minus Armor, but it's very risky. I don't think you throw the Wave of Terror right now. 
Yeah. You just allow for the natural DPS of the Shadow Fiend and the crit will doom to be able to tank this up for you. This would be the second Radiant Snuck Roshan in what looks like a pretty bad position. We saw it yesterday from Unknown. It seems this is the go-to play for the American teams. Arteezy will grab the Aegis. Do they get out? Xyz on the hunt. He chucks out the shards. It's a catch only on PPD though. Sumail on the other side of it. Arteezy down in the river. They are going to isolate Garter. Bring down the Bounty Hunter as well. And Sumail just kind of watches. There was a jump in from Universe, but he's fighting into a lot of firepower. They do him cheeky after the Laguna Blade. And Cedek trying to death this, but Arteezy is getting off so many raises in this fight. And Beth pop back out, trying to commit onto Sumail. There's an armlet on Aggressi, but he is silenced currently. Oh, he's not going to get it. Up the rage, just barely. But can he armlet toggle this? Snowball coming in. He does. He toggles in. Aggressi still rage. Can he toggle again? Yes, he will. Jumping on to fear the familiars finish the job. They've gotten four. It's Arteezy against the world. Can he get that raise? He wants it. He wants it bad. There's another rage available. Pops it. Familiar stun. And will disengage. Masterful play there by XC with the snowball. And the armlet toggling blitz. He was on point. Uh, that was unbelievable. The amount of pressure that he was under in that fight. If he goes down right there, EG take a lot of the momentum. I am just blown away right now. The ability for him to do that while he's getting earn ticked at the same time as the SF trying to throw out the right clicks manages to hit it every got, single time. And he's got to worry about the raises, which will kill him even shortly after the, the armlet toggle if the rage isn't up. That was... That was impressive. Still, EG did get the Roshan, so all is not lost. They still hold on to the Aegis for TZ, but the graphs do dip now. And Track is in the picture at Long Glass Garter has cracked level 6. And right on the back of that C deck, they waste no time. It's smoking up. That Doom is still cooling down. It is daytime. Smoke's gonna get revealed. They know somebody's around the corner. So they find someone. It's Sumail off the bat. He's got the Alpha Wolf here. He's a big source of damage, but he's also a big source of gold. A C deck quickly mow him down and we'll wrap up onto the tower. Radiance I think EG have to just give this up. Shiki still has this combo available. You don't even want to go for the deny or anything like this. It's a little bit too risky. If the Yule Scepter hits you, just because of the numbers advantage, C-Deck will swarm and go for you. And EG, they've done a pretty good job so far of not allowing for track kills. They make sure that Garter dies in the beginning of the fight, but maybe it's too big of a commitment as uh -huh. they're just getting a little bit clumped around the map. He's like, oh yeah, I can infest ancients. Let me try this out. You gotta test it out. Of course, he, he took it the, like the worst yeah, one. He took the most damaged one. This is this is how you look to taunt EG. Does deny a bit of farm though, which is kind of nice. He's got no HP. I think they maybe want to look for this. It's a little bit obvious. They, it stands out a little uh, bit. Hey guys, how's it going? You forgot about me. Jumping on the PPD has the rage going and is going to engage. Can't finish anyone off yet, but the snowball coming in with the charge is sufficient. Universe also isolated, looks for the hook. He does, but it's a death hook. His last words before going down. Aggressive has the rage soon. Does he look for more? They've managed to get two tracks out now. EG. No blitz. One thing we haven't really discussed. This EG lineup is not very good at holding towers if they're playing from behind like this. Most importantly, they don't really have the disables they need, and the initiation isn't quite there. Everybody from CDEC, they move so quickly, LD. You've got a Yule Scepter on one here with the multiple tracks. The ability for this team to engage and disengage immediately, it makes it hard for you to utilize the net worth of the Shadow Fiend, because what ends up happening is, it almost looks like for a second they overcommit, but RTZ just can't chase anybody. And as farmed as the Shadow Fiend is, it, it almost feels like they're just able to ignore him in these fights. Yeah, he's got the Aegis. Yeah, he's still the leader in net worth. But they just kind of fought around him there. Oh, this time they might fight onto him. They do use the open wounds here. Arteezy tries to turn, go for the auto attack. They uppercut Sumail, swap, and tries to get up the doom. He will have to do so, but again, the Laguna Blade quick on the draw. Cheeky is going to look to skate his way out of here. Sumail, tying on, is going to survive. Arteezy laid out the raises, standing through it all. They bring down the Tusk. The Lina should barely make it out, it seems. But C deck are thwarted, and now they're going to lose. Potentially infected is already a second. They get the Goblin. Bounty Hunter down as well. And that C deck lead, a frantic scramble. I mean, you said swarming, and it was starting to feel like a six pull with just like a horde of Zerglings rushing at the enemy base, but EG, they've stabilized a bit now. Because for once, uh, you were able to... Wow, Q. In that last game, the Ancient Apparition was on point throughout most of that game, and this time again, this proved to be a thorn in EG side, but... This time around, the reason why the fight went okay is because C deck actually opened up on Arteezy, and they realized, okay, we're not killing him fast enough, plus he has the Aegis, but by the time they kind of 
started diverting their attention away, he had already done a lot of damage to them. Okay, is gonna settle down a bit now, and in all of that chaos, it is, I think, very important to note that c -Deck got down some great deep wards here. Now, we'll see if these re result in much. Currently, Darkness has been employed, so not particularly effective, but Nietzsche bring three heroes towards top. What's next for Arteezy? Is he just gonna totally skip a BKB this game, do you think, Blitz, or does he go back for it at some point? It's difficult to go for one just because the Lina will eventually go for an Aghanims on her own. And mm -hmm. speaking of the Lina's build, she actually has a BKB. This is such a significant item because even if she gets doomed, she can just kind of run out, reset the fight as long as she doesn't get stunned. But And she's gotten off her spells before the doom every fight. No, she's done, she, he's done an amazing job this game. He actually has. The fact that he's kept up in net worth, the amount of impact that he's had, I don't think a doom has actually killed him yet. Yeah, his positioning this game has been relatively flawless. But, and they've had to commit a lot even to keep Sumail in the fight. PPD's had to swap him out, sacrifice his own life a lot of times, and even then he just barely gets off. Part of it, I guess, is the new, well, not new, but the, the changed cast animation from a while back. It does get a little bit trickier to pop it off. I do think, though, that you have to get it at some point just because of the Visage Birds and the Tusk Snowball. You want to try to avoid the stuns and you need to be able to get on top of people. So you probably just build up your HP pool, and he's done so by picking up the SNY. And by going for the BKB right after, it's probably the best idea. You can even go for something like a butterfly first if you're able to take the Roshan again. I like the Siege Creep mid, just chilling. You're know, having a little vacation up on the high ground. I mean, why not? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's the it's 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 there for moral support more than anything. The creep wave will run in and die, but the siege creep just stands strong. Yeah, kind of hangs out in that mid lane. The life stealer again. He's just chilling in garter. They're waiting around. And the SF's gonna take a tower for this. It's been about a minute since he's been in here. They haven't been able to find anything, but it doesn't look like they want to give this up quite yet. Yeah, this is a long, and this is the danger when you go for these plays, especially when you Dyer's don't have a storm or maybe a bat rider like that hero that can roll in from super long range. This is your pedestrian life stealer. <laughs> the vehicle's actually Dyer's slower than the hero. The one good thing though about this is that you can walk past wards. Yes. Oh, this could be big. Okay, this is just more time. They're gonna miss out on this. I think this oh. is around the time you give it up. Yep. That would have been huge for C deck. They did have the shirk and to uh, cancel that TP, but didn't see it. Good place to get out of there for RTZ. And it is going to be a BKB for him. S perhaps sees the Lina of Shiki, did not rush the eggs, did get his own B BKB first, so... Now RTZ becomes the big bulwark for EG in these fights. He's been virtually unkillable. Let's see if this is the time where they look to group up. I think it's incredibly important for him to get one. You're noticing that he's getting kited too often in these fights and it might take him a little bit too long to get that ultimate off as well. So you just want to make sure that you're utilizing your ultimate off the bat, make it hard for them to kite by slowing them down with it, go for the chase, make yourself a target in the middle of the fight for your team to fight around. The problem right now for me though is... There's the hook! The thoughts. That's the problem for Shiki, he gets hooked but the BKB helps him out a bit here, it won't help him the against physical the physical damage! He gets up the Yules, but then the Requiem awaits him on the way down, swap back in by CPD, making the plays. We're getting to see next, and potentially even more here. Running for his life is Garter. Familiar's gonna get cleaned up. And they did not actually end up deploying the Doom there, but didn't need it. Just that quick hook from Universe. No way out for the Lina. They did such a good job of isolating him, making sure that they didn't have to use the Doom on him that time. And this is going to allow Sumail to open up on aggressive like he does right now. Jumps in, Fear's going to chase this one out, has the silence, they've got the lockdown, and they get the kill. EG, patient, even while C-Deck was mounting their offensive, and now they've clawed this game back to dead even, and it might even go their way after this tower when the graph updates. It's shooting straight up there in their favor. Roshan also just now respawning. That was an unusual lapse in judgment for aggressive, because if I read that situation instantly, it should have crossed his mind, because Shiki should have told him, you know, he, they didn't use Doom for me, they're actually just waiting to hold on to it. Watch out, but look at how quick this Roche drops. 
Are they thinking about it? There is a rocket onto XZ, a warning shot from Universe, and then they jump in. The Roche will end up going down. He's on the other side, though. He rolls the other direction. The backup does come from Cheeky, but at the same time, they're giving up the Aegis against Sumail. That's a track kill for a lot of people. They look to jump in the pit with the familiars too late. Track is there on Fear, though. Double stun. So they have another snowball. Three seconds looking for the TP out. He will make it. So they get the one track kill. There was a lot of heroes involved in that one, but was it really enough? It doesn't seem like it. No, it only costs you your doom, and you would just kill the life stealer. You get the Aegis, you don't lose it. Shadow Fiend doesn't die. And you also deprive C deck of the Aegis. Yeah. The good news though for C deck is that the Lena is about to have the Aghanim Scepter. This is gonna cut through a lot of the Shadow Fiend's health. Even with that DKB and that SNY. Arteezy's gotta be careful once that Aegis fades. We've seen a lot of players will even go into like a more HP items if they see that eggs, you know, I have Scotty, Satanic, perhaps. Just so that you don't get comboed down. And that is something C deck are a bit lacking on is aside from Alina stun, I mean how much disable do they really have unless they get incredible familiar stuns from Q. It's tough to prevent him from popping something like a satanic. They don't necessarily have to gear up quite yet, and they want to deal with all of the lanes first before they go for it. Q's done such a good job of pushing out the lanes. He's almost got an Aghanims on his own. Quite surprising, but, I mean, it's Q. Nothing's really surprising when it comes to item timings for a four position like this guy. He is certainly impressive. Universe also working on his own Aghanim Scepter. Could see quite a few of them coming out this game. 27 minutes in. Bit of a lull here in the action. The teams are going to reset, look for their next items. For C deck, probably trying to wait out that Aegis as we do see an ultimate orb grab by Arteezy. Looks like he wants to continue to pile up the stats. And I am still wondering what's next for Aggressive. We saw a couple of early movements. He is 3 1 and 5, but it feels like his impact in this game has slowed down quite a bit. Whereas you know Doom, as long as he presses R, is always going to be relevant. The life stealer just has had such a tough time because half the time he's balancing over farming from catching up from those failed gank attempts and the other times he's just been inside the bounty hunter looking for those openings but they just haven't been able to find it they don't want to give up this tier two for free they feel like they can maybe go for this fight oh they're scouting so much in the trees and now the hook comes they were expecting this jump in they get up the doom on aggressive but he's on the other side of the cog so he backs out arteezy over committing a bit with the BKB here. It looks like everyone from CDEC should be able to retreat. The Doom's committed. The BKB's down. They maybe want to get the tower and get out. No, they don't even go for that. Instead, familiar hunting. It's time to Safari, but now the chase the other way. Lena trying to get that extra bit of move speed. They even pop a smoke just to retreat quicker. AG knew that that could have been a disastrous turn if they stuck around, but they do get out in time. I do like that they used the Doom for aggressive just to take him out of the fight. I think they realized that even though the Lena is a priority target, she just doesn't stand up very well to the physical right-click damage of Arteezy. What Arteezy is going for right now is he pops the BKB, he's got enough physical damage to make the Lena run away anyways, and it just seems like Aggressive is more of the issue where he was able to arm Letalco for such a long time and killing him with just physical damage didn't really seem like it was doing the job. So with the way the game's developed, Blitz, it's been back and forth pretty close the whole way. c -Deck had that big lead but of 6,000 gold, but it was for a very short period of time, so I wouldn't really say they held it for much of this game. Do you feel like either team has a clear late game advantage? Uh, what are your kind of you know, bullet points here for what each team needs to do to win the game? I feel like for c -Deck, you just have to make sure that whenever you get into a fight, your bounty hunter has at least one or two tracks off, just so that you can get the momentum swing going the other way, and to make sure that your focus on if your focus is on killing the heroes that have the disables. Like you can kind of ignore Arteezy for a little bit unless you're able to just instantly initiate jump on him before he has the Aegis. But other than that, we saw in the previous fights what they did is they ignored Arteezy for the most part. They got rid of the one or two stuns that EG had, and then they were able to just play the kite game. For EG, the game plan is probably get Arteezy into the center of the fights, let him BKB, just start that up, get a good Doom Tarth simultaneously as the hook shot comes in. Because we saw in that last fight, when that's even half a second delayed, they just run away and disengage. You have to make sure that your core, uh, you have a lot of synergy between those two abilities. And the tricky thing is, if you, even if, let's say, you get the perfect jump on Arteezy, if you don't blow him up right away, there's the swap. It's only level one. Now, that level one swap's a bit better nowadays, 700 range, but gets up to level two. Could be tough to focus him down. Yeah, the other scary element that we haven't really talked about either 
uh, enough in detail is that the Visage, he's got almost three birds available to him. And once that happens, he can just kind of assault the back lines, make sure that PPD is kind of feeling harassed at all times. They don't have something like a mech to help him out either. And drive him away from our team. Yeah, exactly. Kill, kill, like, that's kill, the game kill, plan kill, for C deck. Kill, kill. And try to build up an overwhelming gold lead. Get a few track kills off, that's all it takes. Man, for EG to only have that 2,500 gold lead. They may not know exactly, I imagine they realize it's pretty close. Up against track. There's no rest for the weary. See that they're not going to make this easy. They start to move now into the Radiant Jungle. They're confident to push in. Aggressive will engage the Rage here. Just to focus the tower down a bit quicker. There is a rocket the other direction. Arteezy struts down mid. Looking swag as ever. As he looks to clear out this wave, possibly even threaten the high ground a bit. But CDEC do grab the tower. They don't have the glyph once again. Uh oh, this is a lot of damage to be given up freely. Can they even slightly punish it? That Aegis still has quite a bit of time on it. This is much more damage. Speedic did get the gold, but EG got closer to the big objective coming from behind now. Oh, it's the bounty dirt. hunter of Garter. They've been giving a lot of these birds away, actually. I feel like the I control see has to be a little bit better. Five or six go down. And Arteezy looking for even more. Can they engage? Track goes out, but it's on the hero that's the hardest to bring down. They open wounds Arteezy again, just trying to slow him, but they don't want to fight into this Aegis. The problem is they may not have a choice. But there's the eggs. This could be the item now they're looking to set up. They want to bring him down once, probably without using that ultimate if possible. But Cheeky is going to get, end up getting caught out here, focused and brought down. He doesn't have to buy back ready. And now time for round two. Artur unloads the spirit bomb and rushes in. They swap that Q. They're going to get a two for one. All of a sudden, EG, they form up another round of familiars. Almost entirely cleaning them out. And it's aggressive, charging in, looking to man by the shadow. The damage, does he? No, he runs. He turns tail, gets spanked by Arteezy on the way out. They lose another. They don't have the lane of Ibeck. They've lost the lane of Brax here. And they're not done just yet. They track and rush, rush, rush forward looking for more universe. Getting caught up. Four step up to the high ground. Tries to retreat. Steady turns on PPD. They can't even kill him. Oh, aggressive to run. And aggressive has no rage. He does have the armor, but that's it. Can they hunt him down? Juking around the trees. Here, there. Swinging back with PPD as a swap in eight seconds. He's looking to go and gets up the stun. Rage still pulling out. Snowball through. On to two. They need more firepower, it seems. Though the Shadow Fiend oh, the work. Aggressive to the left. To the He's got to get the hell out of here, needs to retreat. You've got an armor toggle for your life. Barely silent, still running. He does end up escaping enough here. Maybe they get at least a track kill out of the PPD's there. He's got the swap ready. That's the gem saved. And it's PPD almost out. EG hang on to their gem. They hang on to their RTZ. They get the Rex. And they get a hell of a lot of gold out of that. What a wild fight, though, by both teams. C deck for a second there. It looked like they were going to turn things around, but immediately rebuffed and aggressive, just gets out by the skin of his teeth. At that point, if you die, you're probably too far behind as a life stealer because you saw what ends up happening. When he's the centerpiece of their team, he's the first one in. He just, he just doesn't deal enough damage to repel anybody. He needs, it feels like he needs like at least one, if not two more items at this point. I think you know? two minimum at this like point. Like AC, Abyssal maybe, but even then, if they just doom him instead, if the Lina gets caught by the clock, then maybe it's not enough. Uh, such a big opening though. They just deny Shiki off the bat and it felt like CDEX's entire plan that fight, Will, was to kill Shadow Fiend once without blowing Laguna and then just kill him on round two with the Laguna, but... They lost the Lina, and any hope of that just disappeared. Yeah, and while we were talking during the pause, that was the that was the thing that we wanted to see: is the clockwork and the doom go off simultaneously, as to give you absolutely no time. That created so much chaos in the fight. Immediately losing Shiki, he bought that Aghanims knowing that they couldn't win the fight without it. But this might be their opportunity. They blink out Sumail, ready with the reactions. They do get the open wounds off on Universe. Oh, the and shards. Everybody trapped in all kinds of weird places, but Universe gets swapped out. Will be kept alive. The Doom commit on to Shiki, who got up a CKP. It's Arteezy. He runs in, starts laying into Q, quickly gonna bring him down and now looking for more to get the stun up on aggressive, surrounded and beaten down, he'll fall as well, they jump on the garter, looking for him to EG, clean out three, and it might be familiars fest the after course here, dinner perhaps, not enough, no, they're gonna let the familiars go, mercy for those, perhaps not for XZ though, fear has just seen him with the eggs, he can void this, he can cancel it, and now the rest of the team is oh, rushing just gonna run away. there's no XZ for this, it's gonna be three on one, maybe four on one as they jump up, 
Oh, do they go straight for that second lane? No, they can't. There's tier twos. Instead, they'll take the range. No, they're going straight for the throne. EG looking for the killer instinct plays. Trying to force out those buybacks. It's Lena against the world. Needs the Tusk to help her out. Fear's getting stunned by familiars as he tries to join the squad. But it might be too late. EG onto the tier fours. They'll bring those down as well. A win here. They're into the top three. Looking for the repeat. Another huge valve event with a slightly tweaked roster. Many doubted them, but EG are showing. They, they just need this one fight. Win. There is a track on Universe right now. They snowball in. C-Deck not giving up the goose just yet. XZ trying to hit on Arteezy. The tank, the Lich pin in the front line. He's way too big. He beats down XZ. They actually have the Laguna. They got him. They actually had to slay the beast. And now Sumail jacked up as well. Has EG overextended. This could be huge. PPD on the run. Popping the dust. That trick worked last time. It won't this time around. His fear will fall. This might be five heroes with this track. This could be five. My goodness, C-Deck. Wait Not for the track. Give up the stun, the track. They got him too. PPD dead as well. It's a wipe. Just C look at the deck. gold change. C deck. That is 7,100 gold changing hands. And you can see it. A very blunt peak as the graph plummets. But they do have an exposed throne with no glyph. Really good reactions by EG. They realize at best this is a 2v5 defense. But Steedeck with the hold of their lives, they did such a good job of fighting around that SFBKB, waited things out for as long as they possibly could. Shiki was so patient with that ultimate, make sure that at the last possible second he's able to nab Artur. And EG, you're not gonna run away from a lineup like this, especially not with track available. And now all of a sudden they're gonna get the Aegis with the cheese on top. And if you give this to the Lina, she's almost always gonna be able universe. to get her ultimate off. Eyes on universe. Does he go for it? Is There's it no worth way he's gonna be able to grab this? Is it worth it? He's got a rocket soon. They're gonna snowball into the pit. Rocket gets fired. And he's oh, gonna go for it. There's the hook. He gets the left hit. Where the hell is that damn Aegis? Oh, he couldn't even click it into chaos. This and it's Lena who grabs it. Still, denies them a little bit of gold. Has the buyback in case it's necessary. And almost just completely snatched away c hopes and dreams. If he was able to get that Aegis on top of the last hit, I, he I just retire as the best Dota player yeah, you ever. Just, all you need at that point is one fight, and he just secures his team the game right there. You remember when Eternal Envy said that he's not in it to win one TI, he wants to win the most TIs ever? I think Universe might be in it to have the most swag plays at Roshan ever. He's already done it on their shaker. Just time to add clockwork to his repertoire. For as much as we talk about that guy, I almost feel like we're still underrating him on this team. Because he's not that outside personality that really streams or puts himself out there, but... He always manages to get the job done, but C-Deck... Those are the scariest ones. The, the silent killers. Yeah. They've done such a good job of holding in this game so far. We've given EG so much credit, but... Despite all of the miss-ups, they are going to be a little bit more ahead. I, I mean, looking back at it, Blitz, now that we may have like a moment here to catch our breath, hopefully... Do you, do you think it was just a straight up blunder to go for the tier four? Should they have backed earlier? Or, cause they could have gone tier twos. They could have just pushed out the lanes, played it very safely. Oh, oh, oh we're gonna have a fight, Snowball. On to fear. They look to jump. Cheeky's there as well. Does he want to commit that Laguna on this hero? Doesn't seem to. Arteezy is though on the track. Oh. He pops the BKP and they look to bring out Cheeky. Laguna already engaged and Cheeky is gonna go down. That's just the Aegis, but they also lose their gem. The bounty hunter dead. Aggressive Doom kept out of the fight. He doesn't have quickly, It's gonna turn into a 2v5 between the Doom the dead leader who's only now responding and looking to engage into this one. The life's still out of the picture. The bounty hunter dead as well. Q. You have to win this fight. To run. To hide. There's no escape from our XC rolling out of the cogs. Likely to be next. He snowballs. He gets the uppercut off. No escape. And Sheik even pops his head out of the base. That's the bold move. Tier 2. Oh, Universe. They're still up, but they're going deeper. They're looking for the kills. No, back to the throne. Back where they started. And EG have done it. They take out CDEX, their arch nemesis, 2 to nothing. And a total reversal from the first time these teams met on the main stage of TI5. And even though this game wasn't as clean as game 1, or that felt more like a draft loss, this felt more like a complete team win. It really did. Everyone did their job. They put Sumail on a less comfortable hero, but he got the dooms he needed later on in the game, and they had great defensive swaps. Yeah, maybe they overextend a little bit, could have played it safer, but hey, it makes it more interesting for the fans this way. So they move on. They're guaranteed final three positioning. Can anybody stop this team? I mean, we're about to find out as Team Secret, they're going to go...